Thank you for joining me. I'm in the book of Jeremiah today, Jeremiah chapter 20. Now, Jeremiah has uh, basically been preaching to the people, and he is disgusted with the deceitfulness of those that are the prophets and the priests that uh, are in the particular land at that particular time. In the first part of Jeremiah chapter 20, he uh, approaches one of the uh, false prophets, a man by the name of Pasher, and, he, and he's grieving over and he pronounces an indictment against this particular man, and he's grieving over the false prophecies that he has deceived the people with. And so in this particular passage, he, he does make this, uh, this pronouncement. But then, starting in verse 7 of Jeremiah chapter 20, Jeremiah goes into a pit of depression. Woe is me. And he says it this way, O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You were stronger than I, and you've prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I cry out violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. Now, those who have been in ministry and who have been intent on serving Jesus in, with, with integrity and with honesty know what Jeremiah has gone through. There are very, very few people in ministry who have been affected, who have not gone through a time of woe is me. Lord, why haven't you done this, that, or the other thing for me? Why have you allowed this to come into my life? Now, this happens not just for people who are in professional ministry, but it happens for people who are, who are serving within the local church and feel all alone and isolated. And actually, one of the things that we need to be uh, encouraged by is the fact that if that's happening to you, it's probably because the work that you're doing is very effective. That's a very common experience for people who are, uh, who are effectively serving the Lord. We experience these woe is me times. In fact, the, the times that uh, David experienced them. Now, his circumstances were, of course, different than Jeremiah's. But David also experienced them, and that's why his psalms are so uh, filled with times of, of, of deep, deep waters that he's walking through. I remember in Psalm 44, this particular passage has uh, impacted me greatly over the years, but in, in Psalm 44, I believe it's verse 12, he speaks about, you have sold your people for a trifle. In other words, as his servant, I have a pretty high idea of my value to the Lord. And, and uh, I'm depressed and I am low and I am struggling. And it just seems like God doesn't understand the value that I bring to his cause. Now, of course, in times like that, we are uh, filled with self and self-pity and all of those kinds of things. But it's very interesting that, that David in that time, and I believe that's a messianic psalm, so, so the Messiah also felt that sense of, Lord, you've sold me out, and you're not reaping the value that I really have for your kingdom. And, I, and Jeremiah is feeling that right here. Woe is me. You've deceived me. Oh, well, God didn't deceive him. God didn't do that, but that's the emotion that Jeremiah is experiencing that is speaking in that particular time. And that's the same kind of thing that you and I experience day by day. If we're walking with him, we can expect that we'll go through these times. Hopefully, they're going to be few and far between, but at the same time, those people who have had effective ministries for Christ down through the years are often people that have struggled deeply with depression. One of, the, one of the greatest was a man by the name of Charles Spurgeon, whose depression was well known. He also struggled with a depressing spirit, 
he felt this woe is me. And you can read through uh, the stories of many of the great saints and you'll realize that they went through these periods of, of dryness, these periods of depression, just like Jeremiah is in this particular passage. The fact that you are experiencing these things doesn't really mean that you have not been effective. In reality, it probably means you have been very effective. And, and this is a part of the sufferings of Christ that he is allowing you to experience along with him. That's what Paul says in Colossians 1, that he is filling up that which is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Jeremiah was doing that. All of the saints that have been effective in service of him have experienced that. And so if that's where you are right now, take heart. It will pass, but he will also use you. Father, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you for those who have served you so faithfully, those who have uh, pressed through dimes of depression and struggle, and who have given themselves wholly and completely to your kingdom and to your cause. And I thank you that you use those people, just as you use Jeremiah. And I praise you that you grant to us the grace to bear your afflictions in our own bodies. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day now.